So hello and welcome to video 9 of the series. In the last video we had a look at logging in Rio Monad uh, and Rio in general a little bit. So uh, today I, we want to have a big change and we want to go to multi-threading. So um, um, just let's have a uh, There are some small changes which we have to do before. Um, uh, but um, I explained it later. No, let's explain it now. So uh, the first thing is, um, as you remember, we had this um, this one conduit which converts from the in situ to the TM frame metadata. So we have the frame metadata, and then we forward this. Uh, there's one thing we shouldn't do. Um, we shouldn't forward this frame if there is no data inside. And the thing is, uh, in the packet telemetry standard, it says uh, there are um, so-called idle frames. If this frame contains idle data in its transfer frame data field, the first header pointer shall be set to zeros once, and the last bit is a zero. So let's copy that. Um, in this case, this you can imagine this like a, like a ping message. So um, satellite transmits empty frame. If it hasn't data to transmit, it transmits these idle frames. Uh, it can also transmit frames with idle packets inside. So different possibilities, but this is just a keep alive ping message MDR. So uh, and on ground, of course, if this is an idle packet, we have no data to 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 extract. So we should throw it away. So this is the first thing to do. So before we forward this, and forwarding is the yield. So we check. Uh, let's go first to the frame. And let's define the header. The first header pointer is is a sixteen bit value. So let's see idle idle frame FHP, which is the word sixteen, and is this value right? So uh, we will export. Oh, okay. Type signature, lexicon time binding. I have probably, yes, I have. So, okay. Uh, we export this. And in this change, we simply check them. So, uh, so if, if this is the idle frame, we, we simply throw it away. So, uh, let's say, unless, um, the uh, frame, we, we have the frame here, so we need to get first, we have a frame, we need the frame header. And this is then the thing where lenses would come in handy, so we will probably do that later. So frame, header, frame. And um, from this frame header, we take the, the, the first header pointer. Uh, and unless this first header pointer is equal to this idle frame, and if this is the case, only then we yield the object downstream, otherwise we throw it away. So first change. Uh, the other change uh, is a little bit of refactoring. I will go through that later. So um, let's have a look at the current architecture, what we have. So um, this is what we currently have. So we have the NCTRS. We are connected to the NCTRS to the TM port. So you see your TC port is for uh, sending commands to the satellite and the admin port is some administrative messages that you get from the ground stations. Uh, not that interesting for now. So then we have the, as you remember, we have this app source, this NCDU conduit, which extracts the NCDUs from the bad strings. Then this converts it to a telemetry frame or uh, passes the telemetry frame. And then we just do a pretty show. So this is basically what is reflected in main in, yeah. So you see, this is the conduit pipeline. And <clears throat> this runs in its own thread. Currently, and there's only one thread, so the main thread. So um, I already said that last time we, we stumbled across these virtual channels, which are inside the telemetry frame header, which is a number. So uh, the data can be split onto these virtual channels. So it would make sense to um, 
to perform some kind of parallel processing. So when we get the data here in, then to split them and then process these, uh, these virtual channels in parallel. Yeah? This is one thing that would make sense. You can do it also differently. Um, you can also split maybe on the packet level or on the parameter extraction level. But for now, let's do it like this. And this could look like this. So uh, we have the same thing going on. We have this app source. This, this is the same as before. And then we have some kind of switcher conduit. And then we have three threads running. For example, for this example, I have um, uh, selected uh, three virtual channels, virtual channel zero, one, and seven. And uh, this switcher then, uh, depending on what is in this frame header, what virtual channel ID, it sends them to one of these threads. So that's the goal for today. And <clears throat> Each of these can then have their own processing chain. So um, we have then <coughs> some kind of uh, already have a look into the future a little bit. So the uh, source for the TPQ. Um, I will explain it later. We will see this. Then the gap check. Um, uh, I don't know if we will implement it today, but let's have a look. And then again, a pretty show. And this one will then be gradually increased so that we can extract then the final data. So we have uh, two stages left, basically. And then afterwards, there will be some kind of graphical use interface. And these um, threads will then update the graphical use interface. That's the goal. So uh, if you want to know how these graphs are originated, so um, this is um, these are generated with graphics. You find them also in the repository. So these are basically the source code. And then they, they generated SVGs. Um, if you want to, in case you want to look them up. So, OK, so let's start. First thing is um, we have in main, we have now this this connect client function at the pretty show. And uh, basically, as we have now several chains, I think we should move this to a different file. And also uh, connect client is, is, is not exactly a good function name anymore. So maybe we should. Um, we should rename this to to run run the institute rest chain, for example. So let's some for some terminology, let's call this the NCTRS chain because it's connected to the NCTRS. And these are then the virtual channel chains. So um, let's first let's create a new file. Let's call this chains .hs. So let's cut this out. And move it there. And um, OK, we have a new file. So let's add it to the cover file. Um, then we have to import chains. Um, uh, okay, so we need to import some some other things. Uh, first, uh, the has config class is not in scope. Yes, so we have defined this in app state, uh, which is also not that pretty. So I want to get this get config out. So let's add another file. Uh, for now, I'm also not quite happy with this naming, but. Um, Just that everything is coupled with the app state is, is not that good. So let's um, let's get it out of the way also. So config and uh, then in app state uh, we need to. And we probably should rename that also later. And in chains, of course, a tpack is not there, of course. Import 
real.txt um, conduit, yes. Uh, yes, and then we have this NCDU right and uh, NCTRS in this case and app source was from um, data data conduit network. So let's copy that. Uh, chains, yes. Uh, config. And you see, uh, we have to import quite a lot for this uh, because this is one of the lowest layers, so it depends on nearly everything other. Uh, and the PP show, of course, this is in main the um, texture printing. And then in main we have to import these chains. Ah, we, we already have that. But we haven't exported anything. So pretty show sure maybe both use in other things too. And connect client, let's remain, rename this in run chain. Um, Actually, this is the NCTRS chain. Run NCTRS chain. Let's call it like that. And let's export it. And uh, yeah, of course, the recursive calls must be named different. And here we call an NCTRS chain. And then we have can remove this, this NCTRS conduit network conduit real text. Uh, let's just comment it, maybe we need it later. And the import of real is redundant in classes. Okay. Um, well, Okay, for now, we will probably need it later, so compiles. So this is the one thing. Um, okay, but let's have a look. So first, the, the basic idea is uh, that we have some kind of, uh, we, we, we have to set up multiple threads. Then for each of these threads, um, we need some kind of communication mechanism, which is unidirectional because we have frames coming in and we need to distribute them only and there's no backflow. So. Uh, something like a queue uh, would be good, and then we need a switcher, which has basically, which is basically a map from a virtual channel ID to these queues, and uh, then depending on the virtual channel ID in the TM frame, it just um, uh, looks it up in the map and then uh, distributes them to the queues, and then the the other processing chain uh, for the virtual channels. They listen on these queues and then uh, continue the processing. So um, the first thing is we need to specify uh, the number of virtual channels and the IDs, and this should be done most probably in the config. So let's see config we see IDs. Let's make this a list of word eight, and let's also specify some default values for them. Uh, And as an example, it's 0, 1, and 7. It's just specified like that for now. Um, compiles. So the thing is, let's actually do a stack run uh, write default config. Let's see. Ah, classes we haven't listed in the cover file. That's right. 
Okay, and uh, as you remember, probably with the right default switch, we write the default to the default config.json. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, and this is how it looks like. So we have the uh, the the ASIN predators mess up the the order uh, because this is a hash map internally that's used. So we have the port, we have the the config, the virtual channel ID zero, one, and seven, the host name and the frame length that's from the last videos. So. Um, okay, let's add the classes. Absolutely right. Good. So first, um, we have to switch a map. So let's define a type for this. Uh, and let's say we make this an int map. Uh, with um, uh, so so for the communication structure, I want to use STM because STM is really great for for multi-threading things, and also the async library. This is already uh, a lot of this is already included with Rio. Some things you need to to import from the unlift IO, but uh, that's okay. And um, so let's have a look at. Um, So this is a. Uh, so we have this this int map and the int map. Yes, it just takes the type, so we need the type, and we have now to decide what to use. So um, um, let's have a look into the. Is it called STM? Yes, STM. So uh, you have different possibilities uh, to pass them. So we need some kind of queue and you have a queue and then you have a bounded queue. And for such things, a bounded queue is, is usually better because a bounded queue has a reserved length. And if this length is, uh, if the queue is full, then it stops and blocks taking until um, the, the consumers uh, drain a little bit more the queue. Uh, if you have an unbounded queue, then you probably will get uh, a, a huge build up and uh, you can have a space leak. So a, a bounded queue would be good. Uh, so we, the, a TP queue uh, is a bounded queue and uh, uh, we need then also specify a type for the bounded queue. So let's say this is a TP queue with a TM frame meta containing inside, right? Uh, define button used, yes. Um, uh, interestingly, it didn't it didn't say undefined for int map or tbq, so maybe it already has them inside anyway. Um, so um, first, let's go first. So we start with um, with this switcher. This should be easy. So. <clears throat> let's go. Uh, let's call this VC switcher conduit, which is a conduit uh, which takes a switcher map. We need to create this map before. And then this is a conduit T which takes um, a TM frame meta and uh, Basically, because then it's finished, it's it's basically a sink or a consumer, and uh, we have a monad, and we don't return anything. Yes, that's good. And um, so this is the first thing. Um, then just um, um, then we have a virtual uh, VC chain. Um, basically, this will be some conduits. And um, um, so let's see. Mm, now we will also let this undefined, but uh, just just that we have uh, a little bit of a setup. Uh, so what we need is for the for the virtual channel chains we need some kind of of um, something that reads from the queue and then uh, converts this queue into a conduit and pulls the values out and then passes them on. So let, let's for now ignore the gap check and then we have um, basically um, we need some kind of uh, so so this conversion of the. Um, 
uh, of this queue uh, to to a conduit, and there is a package for this, um, which is called I think SDM conduit or conduit SDM. No, SDM conduit. Very good. So we have a TQ middle. Let's see. We have a source TPQ, which takes a queue and then uh, delivers the values in the queue downstream. So that's exactly what we need. Yeah. So we want to have this source TBQ. So we will have to probably add this package also. So we have a source TBQ um, with a queue. And so we need somehow uh, a queue. And then we pass this on to the pretty show conduit for now. And then we can add some other processing here. So if we save this variable not in queue in, in scope, of course, yeah, but then we need some kind of queue here. And uh, source TBQ is not in scope, yeah, because we need to import it. Uh, wrong. This is in um, data conduit TQ. And then we need um we need to import the uh, uh, add the, the the library of course so um it was stm conduit let's see now oh and also uh, as we now use the as we now use threads <clears throat> we should also um set the executable to use the threaded runtime yeah because otherwise we wouldn't have. So if we set this to threaded and we set with RTS opts, I think it's called like this, minus N. Minus N means that it starts the, the to, by default to use all, all available cores, um, basically. Yeah, so then we have um, a biggest type variable. Yes, of course. Um, uh we need also so this will be some kind of this will take some some parameter will be a conduit t uh, will in, in some kind of monad and uh let's just say monad uh we will probably need monad io let's see a monad reader nfm and then we need some parameter, in this case, the queue. And we need a has log func. Okay, yeah, right. Has log func env. And a show b. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see the. the, the blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes, so the pretty show function needs. Um, so um, the source TBQ doesn't know what type this is, of course, because uh, we haven't specified. Let's for now TBQ TM parameter. This is a void. Uh, okay, doesn't know what this is. So let's just give it some kind of type variable. And yes, that's it. For now, uh, the only other thing is we will also probably need the virtual channel ID here. Um, let's see that later. Okay, and then we will have to kind some some um, run VC chains function. It also executes in some kind of monad. And uh, this function basically takes the config, uh, sees what virtual channels we have configured, creates the switcher map, starts the threads, and then connects everything together. So um, that's what it does, should do. So uh, let's start with the switcher conduit. So with the switcher map, um, so what shall we do? Um, we 
make an await. This is a conduit, so we make an await forever. We get in the meta frame. So and then we have to check the virtual channel ID. The let the virtual channel ID is uh, first. We need to get from the meta frame. Um, do we have that defined here? Now this is only the frame, so we have the meta frame is here. So we have meta frame. Meta. Then we have the frame. From the frame we need the header. And the frame header. And then we need the frame virtual channel ID. Frame header virtual channel ID. We get in word 8. Yes. And um, then we want to look it up in the map. So um, we have the int map and we just perform a lookup. Not insert lookup, we want just the lookup. Not update lookup. Lookup, yes. Lookup, uh, key, map, and we get a maybe. So, uh, look up, and this is probably the wrong one. So, look up key is from integral virtual channel ID. So, virtual channel ID is is a is a word eight, and we need an int for the int map. So, int and a map in the switcher map. And then we get uh, just uh, a queue. Or nothing. When we get nothing, we haven't found anything and no entry. So we should then probably lock some warning. Um, uh, Virtual channel not configured. Ignoring frame, and then we should probably display show the meter. Yes, so. Uh, of course, this uh, the lookup is not the correct one. So um, let's get to black. Okay, so let's import this data in map strict, and maybe we will have time to add containers. Yes. So we need to add containers. To the library, library um, containers, and then restart. Yes, and then uh, of course we need to uh, import qualified SM. So, and then we have. M lookup uh, variable not in scope frame header because we haven't imported TM frame, I think. Yes, no instance for mono.io, so we need a mono.io M and uh, because we also already used the login, we need the mono reader and it has log func for the environment. That's good. Uh, yes, compiles. Good. Sweet. 
sure, okay. Typo. Um, and of course, then we can remove this pretty show here or basically replace it with the VC switcher. And the VC switcher needs the switcher map. Yes, of course. Okay, let's do this later. Convinced. Um, okay, so uh, the thing is, we have found the queue. So all that we have to do is now pass the data to the queue. That should be simple enough. So um, if you haven't um, uh, used STM, STM is really cool. So the thing is multi-threaded programming, uh, so concurrent programming in this case, is very difficult um, uh, to get right. And um, STM uh, eases this a lot. So you, you, if you have, if you want to pass data between threads, then normally you use some kind of shared data structure and then use logs. Uh, so um, you log this, then one thread, only one thread is allowed to access the data and then uh, you unlock it and then another thread can access the data and this is then uh, without uh, then scrambling the data or getting wrong data to process. Uh, the thing with logs is uh, they, are, they can be, uh, depending on the implementation, it can be quite fast, but um, the log functions don't compose. So if you have multiple functions which are locked and then you want to compose them together, you get into problems. Uh, this is not not really easy to get right and you can easily run into, into deadlock situations or data race situations or whatever. So if, if two threads uh, access the same shared data unprotected, then you have a data race and the deadlock is when, when um, two threads are waiting for each other's resources and lock themselves in. So. Uh, SDM uh, is is uh, composable. You you um, uh, compose transact uh, comp compose these actions in 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 an, in an atomic block, and in this atomic block, um, uh, uh, it's like a transaction on a database. Yeah, so you can um, you can roll back the trans uh, the, 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 if the if the transaction doesn't work because there was a, some some kind of clash then it try, retries the action until it goes through and uh, so it, it ensures that only one thread um, uh, so that the, the two threads are properly synchronized and uh, if you have the queue it's very simple so we just have one queue and then we just have to uh, to uh, make this trans open this transaction right to the queue and close the transaction and that's everything we do and uh, the the this is very easy. So to open the transaction, you use the atomically function, which takes an STM function. And the type system of Haskell then ensures that you can't run any other actions that are, uh, you can only run STM actions within this atomically block. So you can't, can't run uh, arbitrary IO actions. And this is very good. So atomically, and then we what we want to do is we want to write the TBQ and Q, and we want to write there the meta. Yep, that's it, that's the switcher function, finished. Uh, if you want to do something similar, so SDM is very, uh, uh, it's okay to implement in, in Haskell and in pure functional languages. So if you want to have something like that in, in, in imperative language like C++ or so, it's very, very difficult to get right. And because C++ allows arbitrary code to be executed everywhere, you have to be very careful what you do in such transactions. I think there are some implementations, but they are very limited. In Haskell, we have to do all for free. So that's especially parallel and concurrent programming is uh, uh, features in Haskell, which are very, very good. So uh, as we have wait forever, we don't need to care for the looping. So that was the switcher. Uh, we have the chain also. Okay, and then we have to do the setup somehow. So first thing, um, we need to get the config. Let's stay with the pattern from last time. So um, ah, not if ask. Sorry. So we need a uh, we need to specify, of course. Uh, monad m, monad reader m, nf m, 
uh, and has config and so currently we only read the config and also we will this will probably be a monad io as we have to to spawn threads so we get, we now have the config so uh, from the config um, um, we need to extract the virtual channels and for each virtual channel so first we create this switcher map so for each virtual channel we create a queue and uh, insert this so um, how to create a queue let's look that up quickly the tbq is with we can create it with new tbq which is in an stm transaction so we pass it the maximum number of elements the queue can hold it's why it's a bounded queue and uh, this is an stm transaction but we can also use this new tbq io then we run in the io monad um i don't um we are currently in the control concurrent in the stm package possibly we should um go to the unlift io package because then unlift io let's see and um blah blah blah, blah. where are we stm here stm tbq new tbq new tbq io and this is then a monad io instance and not the io monad itself so this is what we want so unlift io stm new tbq io uh, but this is a monadic function so we can't do this um, uh, in pure code so we, we need to somehow create a new tbq io and then we have to give it a, a size for the queue a maximum bound size for now let's specify a constant q size let's say for now 500 yeah and if we put this here then we get already the type it's a natural so uh, we create this queue and we need to create the queue for each um, virtual channel so basically what we want is a, a list of pairs virtual channel to virtual channel converted to int and the queue and from this we make a with the int uh, int map we make a from list and then we get the map so basically this would be the idea so um we need the So very conveniently, my audio system crashed for some reason. No idea what happened. I had to reboot, so here I am again. So um, what do we need? A running GHCAD. So basically what I want is um, is here going happening so basically i want to have a create queue function which takes the word 8 vcid and uh, generates the the queue size uh, at the queue queue um, and then from integral vc id and a queue and we could even should we use two perceptions and no let's don't complicate things so um okay um so we need to get the the uh, virtual channels out of the config config virtual channel ids so Blah 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 blah. Where are we? Chains. Yes. Um, from the config. Um, so this is the list, and then we 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 map this function. Uh, map m create q over this, and then we get um, we get the list. Hopefully. Yes, and then. M 
um, list, list. Why didn't I get this? Um, uh, so now we have to switch a map. Um, and then we need to pass this uh, down, of course, to the to the switcher conduit somehow. And we need to pass this within here. So basically, we should also not. Uh, we should call this run chains generally, and then we should have an extra function run vc chain, which just runs one virtual channel. Yep. Um, okay. And um, run VC chain should basically run conduit. So we give it a chain. Run conduit this chain. And then we can also do something like exception uh, catching or something like that. So um, run conduit, which is uh, so I don't know what. We take it. Uh, yes, and of course I should be able to type. Standing for conduit T. Yes, this is a conduit T. And as you see, this is basically a blind a, co a blind conduit, which means it doesn't get any input and it doesn't create any output. Uh, that's that's okay in this case. Um, it's a, a complete conduit chain always has this um, this type. Uh, yes, and um, we will also need probably some other parameters. So um, we have now the switcher map. We have this list with uh, virtual channel IDs and virtual channel IDs and queues. And we also need to pass each of these two to this uh, VC chain. So basically, we should get a pair of int and a TPQ TM TM for a meta. Uh, yes, but also no, that's okay. Um, and so we get the VCID and but the VCID we actually don't need probably do we need it for now let's pass it in um, yes so this will then run the conduit or should we run the conduit address uh, no we don't have resources here I think or does the does the STM conduit needs just a monad IO instance? Okay. So um, how to run the threads in parallel? So basically, um, there are convenience functions for this. Um, in let's see. Concurrency, and we should go probably go here. Yes, and there, for example, we have this. Um, so we have a list of virtual channel IDs with the queue, and then we run want to run parallel threads on on every uh, every element of this list. So we have um, uh, four concurrently, something like that. Yeah. Uh, basically, yes, we have no return values. So you have a, a foldable, uh, in our case, the list, and then a function to run on it, and then uh, this runs these ones all in parallel. Uh, for concurrently, yes. Well, let's just copy that. So this means for concurrently and um, uh, in the list, which is this LST. 
and so it's actually good that we have that available and not did this with the f map and then run run we see chain and now we can do bridge blah 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 okay um because expected type int in m actual type oh yeah we need to pass it a chain of course uh and we have to set up this vc chain yes so uh also we should probably then we need to if we want to apply a partial function application we should change the order so make the chain here and then we can simply write run chain vc chain okay uh kind of expect the type with uh Conduit fractal type TPQ. Yes, we need to pass it also the Q. Um, basically, as we get in the VCID and the Q, we should probably do it like this. And this is a uh, And then we have to VC chain. Uh, okay, so then we have to use um, the parameter. Uh, run chain VC chain VC. And we've also passed in VC again. Could not deduce has log func. From VC chain, run VC chain. Uh, yes, so we need here the has log func. So basically, we should just copy the constraints. And we need also for uh, run VC chain, we have it also here. Has log func env, of course, we need it also here. And then we need here a monad on lift IO from for concurrently. So this is a monad on lift IO. And yeah, so um, does this work? Probably not. Uh, because um, we have now run the threads, but then it stops here probably. Uh, and uh, it won't start the NCTRS thread, I think at least. Let's have a look again at the docu. For concurrently, map concurrently with a. No, 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 no. I think this runs the thread and waits then until all of them finish. Um, at least this, that's the intended behavior of, of this concurrently. So there's also the deraise function, which returns when the first one returns. So um, this means um, we basically have to run this also in, an, in, in, in its own thread. Um, let's do this quickly with the async function. This is quick and dirty. And um, then we run the NCTRS chain. And then we need to pass in the switcher map. So again, we, we want to use this VC switcher in the NCTRS. So here, instead of this pretty show C, and this needs the switcher map. And so we need to pass in the switcher map. Um, so yes, and um, switcher map run NCTRS chain. recursive call 
Yes, and then run the uh, uh, Okay, and then we don't run the nctrs chain, we run the chain. And run. We run all chains, run chains it is called. So in main, run chains. And we need to also import chains. Maybe we should export it there also. Okay, and then we have here the queue is undefined uh, for now. Uh, run conduit chain. Uh, actually, do we need to pass it in? No, probably not. I think we can get rid of the pair here and. Uh, because the chain gets it all already here. So, yes, we can do something like this. And then we have a redundant constraints uh, the mono reader env and the. Uh, okay. And uh, we could also. Can we do this with function composition? Probably. Would this work? No. Oh, it would work. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the VCID, which is unused here. So, okay. All good. Um, what is the matter here? Eta reduce. Okay. Uh, the thing with eta reduce, uh, it works, but uh, if you have functions, um, that, that should inline, you should always saturate the arguments. So normally I have a .hlint YAML file so that, that hlint does not uh, warn me about uh, it reduce. So uh, I don't care that much about it reduce. Uh, okay, so this compiles. This should set up the threads and Basically, in we now in our data file we just have one virtual channel, the virtual channel zero. Whenever, if I remember correctly, so I will create also a, a have a look at it, that I create a data file with, with more virtual channels. Anyway, so um, what we um, if we try it now, it, it should work as before. But basically test data okay ah okay unexpected error it doesn't like it mm -hmm. um doesn't like it. For some reason we can do this also. For now do it quick and dirty. I'm not sure if minus n is, is passed in on default. Oh, so in you see we have we have the data coming in. And it behaves as, as before, I should just that now uh, there is a, a, a chain in between. And um, so let's have a look again if it, um, do I have it open? Yes. So there is the queues in between and now it runs only on, it first runs on this thread and then on this thread. And these two threads are not used currently with this data. Um, and, uh, but uh, what, what also uh, uh, is done probably is that, that this thread and this thread is the run parallel. So while this thread is processing and putting out, this thread is already pulling. So um, this is like a pipeline in a, in a CPU. So so the, the pipeline stages are working in parallel. So this should already give uh, also some, some kind of speed up. Yeah? And then, then depending on how fast this queue is here and the transaction handling of STM, uh, 
it can this this can vary, but um, basically, so so now we have pipeline stages which are running in parallel. And uh, do we have to do something more for this? I think it's already long enough. So uh, I let it at this. For the next session, I will create a data file which has uh, multiple virtual channel frames inside. And uh, maybe we then can output that we see that the different threads have used the different virtual channels. And yeah, so far, um, thank you for watching.